call this uh, joint meeting of the mayor and council along with the finance committee to order. Um, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's just face the flag that's in the front of the building. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you please remain standing for just a moment? Um, Councilman Guijalva's mother, um, fortunately, um, had a heart attack this morning. She's being transported to Tucson, and if you just take a moment for silent prayer on her behalf. Amen. Thank you. Item number four, roll call for the mayor and council. Um, mayor Donald Hewish. Here. Mayor Potemper Margaret Morales. Present. Councilmember Mitch Lindemann. Councilmember Dani Acosta. Councilmember Ray Shelton. Present. Councilmember Michael Valdenegro. Present. Councilmember Jose Vijalva. Interim City Manager, seated Treasurer Luis Pedosa. Present. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for the record. Uh, council members Mitch Lindemann, uh, Mrs. Acosta, Dani Acosta, and Mr. Jose Pijalva are excused. Thank you. Roll call for the Finance Committee, Ms. Daniel. Mr. Jose Pijalva. Ms. Alex Valeo. Present. Mr. Adam Brake. Ms. Anel Lopez. Present. Mr. P. Cordova. Present. Mr. Mitch Michael Valdenegro. Present. Mr. Luis Pedrosa. Present. Ms. Monica Miranda. Present. Thank you, Ms. Daniel. Item number six, persons wishing to address the council or the finance committee in writing or verbally on any item not on the agenda today. Do we have anybody? I do not have any public participation requests this morning. Ms. Daniel? Thank you. Hearing none, we'll move on to item number seven, presentation discussion regarding the fiscal year 2021-2022 operating budget. Mr. Pedrosa, please. Or starting off. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Mayor, mem members of council and finance committee members. It gives me great pleasure to present the fiscal year 21 22 uh, budget presentation with our recommendations and our discussion uh, today. I, um, we will be presenting as a budget team, uh, which is comprised of uh, Monica Miranda, Craig Poland, Damian Dorame, Rocio Garcia Pedrosa, and myself. We will all, all be presenting different areas of, uh, of the budget, and um, all of those team members played an important role in getting this uh, document for your uh, consideration today. Starting off with the first slide, um, we, we'd like to set, uh, set this up to, to remind ourselves as to what, what, what the budget document is. I believe that uh, the budget before you um, aligns with these points. Uh, the funding package in our proposal is meant to address a lot of community needs and desires as well as important infrastructure. The recommended budget encompasses a balanced approach to the vision of Douglas as well as the plan adopted by the mayor and council. We'll start off by um, just depicting three major 
major points. There's, there's obviously a lot of substance to the budget, but three, three points that I, I'd like to get uh, things started and very excited about. We have $4.3 million in uh, the American Rescue Plan funding from the federal government that we will apply towards public safety salaries. We are, we are still waiting on guidance from the federal government, but what we've received so far in, in information is that the proposed use towards public safety salaries is an approved use of these funds. Um, we know we're gonna get them in two tranches, uh, uh, so we'll, we'll probably receive half um, in, in the beginning of the new fiscal year and the other half towards the end of the fiscal year. By utilizing 4.3 million towards public safety, we're able to free up some, some existing funds that we can utilize for one-time capital expenditures. This budget recommends that to be split out as follows. Investment into our, street, our streets equipment infrastructure, about $1 million. Community projects, about $1.1 million. Public safety, $829,000. Downtown revitalization, $300,000. Port of entry, water and sewer infrastructure design and engineering, $500,000. Other major investments that we're looking at outside of the ARP funding, uh, water infrastructure investment that includes a new well, about $2.2 million into our water, and continuing our street projects uh, at about $500,000. We will also be addressing a major financial obligation for now and for future years to come. Our pension bond obligation is included in this package, uh, $40 million bond issuance to alleviate our unfunded liability in the police and fire and save approximately $15.7 million over 18 years, but also stabilize our PSBRS contributions that are currently increasing year over year. With a stabilized debt service amount, we can achieve that. You, Mr. Pedrosa, just the, the ARP funds being used for public safety salaries is, at this current point in time, what they've explained to us, is the safest route to go. That is correct. Compliance. To be in compliance with the utilization of the funds. Yes, correct. So a little bit about where we are this year. I, I know we've talked about how challenging this year has been with COVID. Uh, thankfully, we, we have seen uh, positive things come out of COVID. I realize that um, you know, businesses are struggling and in many different aspects of our everyday life were hindered, to say the least, but we, Financially, we have, haven't fared so, so badly, uh, to, to put it one way. Uh, and actually, uh, we've gotten a steady revenue, revenue stream. Sales tax revenues are actually up 25% compared to last year for the same uh, quarter through March. Uh, some of the initiatives uh, this fiscal year, going into next fiscal year, are that we updated our strategic plan to reflect our the values of the mayor and council and the community, and we put those uh, to work. On the economic development front, again, coming out of COVID, uh, like I said, don't want to downplay the challenges. We know they're out there, but there is opportunities for existing and new businesses to reinvent and, and come out uh, of this challenge better than, than before. New businesses that we see on the horizon um, that have talked to us or that have uh, made some uh, financial moves here in the city, Tucson Oncology is uh, 
will be building a, a, a building here in Douglas. Duncan will be setting up a shop at, uh, by the Walmart, inside the Walmart. And the possible uh, recreational marijuana dispensary since the city of Douglas won uh, the lottery for that. So those, those are uh, very much possibilities coming to the city of Douglas. As we all know, we have heard our port of entry efforts and how we continue to work uh, diligently towards um, acquiring a new commercial port of entry as well as renovating our existing port. Various stakeholders can continue their involvement with our ports and shown by the recent visits of the, uh, just this year, our Arizona governor, Congresswoman Kirkpatrick, Senator Kelly, ADOT officials, and the IBWC that just visited within the, the last few months, all in relation to uh, our, our port of entry activities here. We are currently um, looking at two different sources of funding for, for the port of entry uh, that we feel are quite viable. Our, the current infrastructure bill that is being considered by Congress contains port of entry funding. It passed the way it is uh, proposed. It will fund our two ports of entry here in Douglas. The other funding source that we are working with our elected, uh, federal elected officials are through an appropriations request that we set forth um, and it's being supported by uh, our congressional de delegation for fiscal year 22 appropriations. Other accomplishments uh, in relation to our port of entry, uh, two key studies that were finalized. First one being the urban design or downtown revitalization study funded by GSA and EPA in anticipation of the construction of a commercial port of entry. And the water and sewer infrastructure master plan study conducted by Statec, which was funded by the county. Also, um, basically laying down the roadmap uh, as to how we assess that infrastructure in that development area. With that, Mayor, I will go ahead and turn it over to Monica Miranda, our finance manager. Thank you, Mayor and Council, finance committee members. Um, we'd like to give you a brief snapshot of where we are right now fiscally as we prepare to enter into the school year 21-22. Um, thankfully, the city was able to weather through the COVID pandemic, as we mentioned. Um, from July through March, we saw an increase of 25%, or $148,848 on average per month in sales tax revenue compared to last year, along with a surplus of $871,086 in the general fund for the same period. This surplus can be greatly contributed to vacancy savings in different positions throughout the year. March 2021 was also the first month in sales tax revenue that did not include the border wall contractor generated tax revenue. Additionally, the border remained closed to only essential travel. Respective to these two facts, we saw an increase of 12% or $73,308 above last year's total. And we anticipate this pattern to continue through the remainder of the 2021 fiscal year. And we're conservatively, conservatively projecting we'll finish the fiscal year with approximately a $1 million surplus in the general fund, which is a testimony to our resiliency. We're blessed to have fared the COVID pandemic so well. Um, this next slide that you see before you is a breakdown of the various types of funds that encompass our annual budget. As a point of reference, um, due to different funding structures that city government has, we want to show you the purposes and restrictions each fund has. Each fund is structured to raise revenues to sustain the functions of the specific funds as prescribed by local, state, or federal laws and regulations. The first um, fund that you see is the general fund, which includes our general fund, the airport and golf course budgets. The functional departments within the general fund include our public safety, public works, leisure services, which is parks and recs, um, administration, and other departments. 
Funding sources include taxes, voter approved um, state income tax revenue, which uh, is previously known as state shared revenue, uh, user fees, licenses, and permits, etc. The special revenue funds include HERF, Highway User Revenue Fund, uh, there are gas tax, transit, housing, RICO, capital projects, and debt service. The functions of these funds is designated by law and designated for specific uses. Funding sources is the gas tax for the HER funds, Section 8 for housing, RICO seizures, and capital and debt service. The enterprise funds are made up of our water, sewer, and sanitation departments. These funds function as business type activities that are self-sustaining with the operational revenue they generate from user service charges. We have one internal service fund, which is our self-funded insurance. And this fund is used to charge the costs of individual activities to the individual funds within our city budget. In this case, the city self-administers the health insurance for its employees. The funding source for this fund is charges made to each individual department. Um, the next slide that is before you is a summary of the sources of revenue and the requested departmental expenses for fiscal year 21-22. Um, as you can see, for the general fund, um, it's balanced in, uh, at $61,356,950. And this includes the $40 million pension obligation uh, bond that Lisa mentioned in this prior slide. Our enterprise funds are sanitation, water, and wastewater. Uh, the revenues for this, these funds are $9,780,029. Uh, we're using 278,000 in carryover from fiscal year 2021 uh, for capital projects and 674,000 in the fund balance to balance uh, our expenses at $10,454,29. Our CIP fund is our capital improvements. Our revenues for this fund are projected at $4,528,561. We're going to be using $717,592 in carryover from fiscal year 2021 to balance to our expenses of $5,246,153. The next fund is our transit fund. Our revenues for this are projected to be $1,262,432, of which we'll be using $89,498 in the transit transit fund balance to balance our expenses of $1,351,930. The HER funds, which is the streets, that uh, the funding we get from the state gas tax, our revenues are projected at $1,468,592, and we'll be using $258,174 of HER fund balance to balance our expenses of $1,726,700. The debt service fund is balanced at $3,340,679. Our housing uh, budget is at $212,195 in revenues, and the general fund will be subsidizing $32,978 to balance the expenses. Our airport uh, fund is at $116,565. And it's balanced with a general fund subsidy of 33,078. Our golf course is fully subsidized at $180,000. Monica, that's in the general fund. Yes. Well, yes. I know it's always a topic. In this next slide, we wanted to highlight the major changes in expenses. Uh, the, the following slide will include the changes in revenue within our general fund for the fiscal year 21-22. Major changes in our general fund expenditures include the PSPRS unfunded liability payment of $40 million, the PSPRS bond debt payment of $2,355,000, our PSPRS contribution decrease uh, due from due to the unfunded liability payment of two million five hundred eleven thousand seven hundred and twenty six dollars. We also funded the deputy city manager parks and mechanic positions for twelve months at one hundred eighty thousand dollars increase. Uh, overall departmental operation and maintenance increase of one hundred eleven thousand nine hundred eighty five dollars. 
uh, we have an election for this coming year at $30,000, and our consolidated court costs increase of $154,399, which is a total major changes in expenditures for the general fund of $40,319,658. If I can just clarify, just and make it a point here of, of what, what we're doing with PSPRS is by issuing $40 million in bonds, we're exchanging our current liability of $2.5 million that we pay every year uh, uh, for, for our pension obligation, we're replacing that with a $2.3 million debt service amount. So there, there's a net, uh, a positive net effect of about $200,000 for this year. So that's um, that's the initiative this year to issue that $40 million, $40 million bond. Moving on to major changes in general fund revenue. Um, increases in general fund revenue are $40 million with the PSPRS bond. Um, our voter approved state shared sales tax went up $230,827. The American Rescue Plan funding of $4,385,561. Our city sales tax is projected to increase uh, by $887,500. And the vehicle license tax uh, is increasing at $33,683. For total major increases in general fund revenue of $45,537,571. We saw a decrease in police operation reimbursement. And I'm gonna skip down to the DUSD school resource officer we decreased in police operation reimbursement of $451,720 and the DUSD school resource officer $19,898 and that's largely due to the decrease in PSPRS contribution rates. Our voter approved local income tax, which you know it as urban revenue sharing, decreased by $201,409. Our ambulance fees are projected to decrease by $400,000 and that's uh, due to the city moving away from facilities transfers. Our investment earnings decreased $124,844 due to market conditions caused by the COVID pandemic. And our rental payments decreased by $172,100 um, due to the loss of the border wall contractors. For a total major decrease in general fund revenue of $1,369,971. Thank you, Mayor and Council and Finance Committee members. Uh, next, we'll be getting into the General Fund Capital Project Funding Request for fiscal year 21-2022. Um, and we'll start with the Mayor and Council Project Requests. Um, the first one would be the Raúl Castro statue, uh, with the project amount requested being $30,000. The next item down would be the electronic voting system at $16,000 and the Vietnam Wall replica. Um, only the amounts that have been previously approved were included here as carryover. Uh, it's to the discretion of Mayor and Council to decide if these projects will move forward and fund additional <coughs> dollars necessary to complete the projects. Um, however, we do recommend funding the, not funding the electronic voting system uh, that's because we have an all-inclusive solution within the existing budget, uh, which is FY2021, um, that will encompass agenda management, municipal code updating, and electronic voting. So that software will take care of what's being requested here. Um, in addition, the Vietnam wall replica, uh, we recommend reclassification of the carryover as you can see here, there's $25,000 carryover funds uh, for that. And not recommending to, to fund the additional monies uh, needed to complete such a project uh, at this time because the vendor is not able to meet the city's purchasing policy requirements. Um, so total carryover funds uh, for city, mayor and council projects is $34,000 at this time. Going over to the next uh, slide, we'll talk about development services department's uh, request. 
um, which include the downtown revitalization construction project, uh, and the amount requested was a million dollars. Uh, in addition, they requested a mulcher attachment, uh, which carries the cost of $5,000. Uh, and then the rest of the projects here have carryover funds uh, from the previous fiscal year. Um, for the downtown revitalization, we're recommending that we fund $300,000 uh, of, of what was being requested. Um, and that's because the streetscape design is scheduled to finish by January of next year. Um, and we'll use the $300,000 towards construction. There's a $50,000 carryover there, um, which is currently being used to fund the, um, the streetscape design itself. I just wanted to clarify that, because that's already allocated towards it. Um, in addition, for the mulcher attachment, um, we are recommending funding the $5,000 that they're requesting. Uh, and what this does, it allows to mulch mesquite and thick brush from cleaning right-of-ways and washes. So it just beautifies the city. Um, and then the $40,000 you see there at the carryover for the general plan, uh, we'll actually be using the county's assistance in writing the plan, uh, which we intend to send to the voters next spring. And the abatement program has a $55,000 carryover funds, um, and those funds will be used to address white properties. Moving on to the next slide, uh, we'll talk about the finance and utility building department, as well as economic development. <clears throat> for finance and utility, utility building, uh, they're asking for $2,250 to renovate their office for flooring and repainting. Um, and then they're also asking for a certificated burglar, burglar alarm system at $10,000. Um, finance needs carpet and tile replacement and paint on their walls. This is funded partially by a water fund and the general fund. So that's 50% of the total cost of, of that project. Uh, and a certified burglar system at safety and security at City Hall and is a recommendation from our insurance. Um, so we're recommending that you fund both of those projects um, for a total cost of $13,250. Um, as we move along to economic development, um, the request is for $30,000 for an economic development study um, to study our border area to utilize for potential investors and businesses interested in Douglas um, that can show the impact of border crossings towards our economy. And the project amount requested is $30,000 to fund such a study. And we're recommending that that gets funded at $30,000. We'll also assist in our pursuing grants also to have better data on job creation, potential job creation. Yes, uh, I mean, I could talk about that if you like, but. <laughs> I think it has greater impact than just attracting. There's a lot involved in it. And that we get asked in grants, well, what about this? What, you know, where do you show us that what this is gonna do and this study will hopefully show us that. Right. Moving on to IT, information technology. Um, their request consisted of an IT IDF upgrade, which are server racks, um, for them, a total amount of $12,000. Security camera replacements for fire, um, the fire department and the public works farm at $9,000, and a computer replacement um, that they requested $60,000. So their total request added up to $81,000. Um, we're recommending that you fund the $12,000 for the server racks uh, because it's necessary to keep the server racks organized and well kept as they provide vital data needed to perform daily tasks. Uh, in addition, we are recommending that the $9,000 for the security camera replacements uh, also get funded for the fire department and the public works farm, uh, and that's just for security. Uh, of those facilities. Um, 
in addition, we are recommending that um, $20,000 of the $60,000 get funded for a computer replacement program um, that would just generally replace the computers throughout the city that are old and not running in optimal condition. Uh, so the total amount recommended uh, to be funded for IT is $41,000. And part of that is to not burden future councils and future budgets replacing everything at once. And so as we stagger these replacements, it will help future councils and future budgets to be able to handle more judiciously than replacing everything in one, one fell swoop. It will spread it out. Right. So uh, if I can clarify that a little bit, that request for $60,000 is the total cost of that program, um, and it was broken up into three different years for the funding request. So we were recommending funding the first year of that program. Um, moving on, we'll go to library requests, um, and their request uh, consists of hotspot hot spot devices for thirty-seven thousand um, dollars, a second floor expansion for $350,000, a uh, project to finish exterior trim work of $5,000, a reconfiguration of the staff area for $10,000, a digital microfilm machine for $10,000, uh, carpet room re repairs, and to complete the patio project. Um, so their total amount requested for fiscal year um, 21 and 22 is $412,000. Uh, I just wanted to talk about the hotspot devices. Um, they're eligible or have applied for grants for, for those kinds of projects. Um, sorry, for the hotspots themselves. We've been able to obtain those hotspot grants for the past five years, and we're recommending to continue to pursue those grants. Therefore, uh, recommending to not fund it from the general fund. Um, in addition, for the second floor, it's the expansion of the mezzanine. Um, we have obtained CBDG grant funds in the amount of $150,000, and we are pursuing two other grants to pay the difference um, currently. So again, we're recommending not using general fund monies to fund that project as we're seeking grants for that. Um, we are recommending to Fund five thousand dollars to finish the exterior trim work um, of the library and reconfiguring the staff areas of, of the library to provide better space, which would be uh, ten thousand dollars. So total amount recommended for funding uh, for these requests is fifteen thousand dollars for those two projects. Uh, and if you can see on the carryover column, um, there's monies in there for the last two projects. Uh, for the conference room repair and complete kind of project. And from there, I will turn it over to Chief Bullen, and he will continue with these the project requests. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, members of the finance committee. I'm continuing with the partner requests. <coughs> Looking at cemetery, the amount requested uh, was $9,000 for a John Deere Gator. This is a replacement, as well as $45,000 in carryover for cemetery upgrades by way of upgrading the water lines, surface treatment of the streets, as well as the addition of new trees. Moving on to leisure services parks. Of the items requested and recommended, uh, the funding of a portable power washer, which is necessary for servicing areas without ready access to water. Um, they are also in need of a replacement gator. A birdie cutter, which is a tool that is used for turf maintenance to detach and prepare grounds in quicker fashion. Um, they are looking to request a grant from Freeport for uh, replacement of the infield soil at the girls softball field 
they have been playing on dirt for a number of years and they need clay and properly installed infield. The other recommendation is bringing the portable fence to the D-backs field at the airport park, which will allow different age categories to have access to the field. Um, underutilized tennis courts at Veterans Memorial Park are not being used for tennis and are instead uh, being used for soccer. Staff has recommended installing turf on the surface which will create an indoor style soccer play surface enough for two fields and there is already ready gliding there. We're starting a team for the finance committee and the council. <laughs> Get your knees wrapped up. <laughs> and by the icy hut. And by the icy hut, thank you. <laughs> um, we're also recommending the replacement of the irrigation pump along the linear park. Um, this will repair the pump for automation which staff is currently doing manually, uh, as well as placing a roof over it to uh, protect it from the elements. We're also uh, recommending the addition of $90,000 to prepare a master plan study that will assess the community needs for different facilities, such as a new pool, community center, skate park, shading in parks, and other recreational needs. In addition to the $90,000, we are recommending the set aside of $425,000 um, towards the recommendations that come from that study. Continuing with parks, um, carryover funding for the concession stand at d Field in the amount of $50,000. Also the pet park funding of $20,000 as we continue to research the best location as well as looking for additional funding by way of grants. Uh, the Recreation Division is in need of a trailer to transport the recently acquired movie screen as well as other recreational equipment. Continuing on to Leisure Services Aquatics, um, we are looking to fund upgrades to the safety equipment and supplies for the lifeguards in the amount of $5,000. Uh, roofs over the new pump at the aquatic center as well as the baby pool area to again protect them from the elements um, in the amount of $25,000 uh, for the main pump and then $6,000 for the baby uh, pool room pump. Um, there's also requests and recommendation to fund an ADA chair uh, for the aquatic center the uh, center currently only has one chair that is shared between the main pool and the therapy pool. We are requesting, uh, recommending $5,000 uh, to fund a dryer for swimsuits and service <coughs> for our patrons. And then carryover and reconfiguration of aquatics office for additional personnel um, and the A Street pool paint and chip seal. That's in the amount of $5,500 for the pool and paint, uh, for the pool paint and chip seal, I'm sorry, and then $25,000 for the office reconfiguration. We are recommending the reclassification of these funds. Uh, the A Street pool has reached the end of its useful life. The pool is very large, requires substantial maintenance costs. The pump and filter systems are outdated and very expensive to replace. Fixing this pool is costlier and it is time we provide our citizens with a better functioning outdoor pool experience. This too will be considered as part of the uh, Parks Master Plan. And the last uh, department I'll cover is the Visitor Center. A interactive visitor kiosk was requested in the amount of $38,665. The recommendation is not to proceed or not to fund um, that request at this time. We are looking to uh, recommend the $5,000 requested for office furniture and equipment, in addition to $5,000 for tables and tablecloths, and $5,000 for storage space for the tables and chairs. We recently replaced the uh, long tables for events and meetings. Uh, we need to replace other meeting tables with round tables, as well as some additional new long tables. 
We are also looking to add a connex to store the chairs, which are currently being stored inside the, uh, the visitor center conference room and visit, uh, visible to the public during events. Um, again, we are not looking to recommend the funding for the interactive kiosk. Uh, we will continue to prepare ourselves and do smaller efforts such as signage to orient our visitors. Passing that back to Luis. Thank you, team. Our next department is our Fire EMS Capital Request Department. Um, if uh, you haven't noticed at the bottom, anything with a with an asterisk is either eligible for or has been uh, pursued through a grant. Uh, so you will see that uh, throughout our presentations. Um, although we will uh, allocate funding within our existing funding, we will still continue to uh, pursue grants for, for these projects. Uh, the cardiac monitors, um, again, that is one of those items that is being requested through grants currently. Um, we are still recommending that we fund it with our existing general fund. Our <coughs> cardiac monitors are now obsolete. We need to replace seven of those monitors to continue to provide advanced life support uh, for emergencies. We're also recommending to fund the second set of PPE or the that is expiring for our firefighters. What this means is that firefighters, um, if their first set, if it's sent for cleaning, um, they do not have a workable set. Therefore, they would not be able to fight fires during this time. Uh, we send gear for cleanup after fires to help with cancer prevention. Uh, therefore, the need for the second set to have um, just in, in, in case. Um, there is also a request for uh, another engine. Um, there were uh, some concerns expressed by the uh, fire department um, with the performance of two of the uh, of our existing engines that are 20 and 30 years old. Uh, since we acquired an, uh, a new engine last year, we are not recommending funding for another one so close to this one, as that would present funding challenges in replacing them in the future. Uh, meaning that uh, basically uh, we would, as the mayor alluded to earlier, uh, we don't want to burden future councils with, as well as our fire department, to be able to fund back-to-back -back, uh, fire engines at, you know, such a heavy cost. Uh, so we're trying to structure them in, uh, in a format that um, is staggered. And um, nevertheless, we, we know that if one of our engines uh, were to fail, uh, we will be recommending the use of either emergency funds or other available funding towards the purchase of a new truck. So let's just say that an engine does fail and it's not the right time to have having to replace that engine, then that's when our emergency uh, reserves, which we we have those uh, allocated for purposes such as this, would come in. We are recommending the partial funding of fire station renovations equipping of, a res of the rescue truck that was donated by Southwest Gas, and gym fitness equipment at $15,000, $13,000, and $7,000, respectively. Um, we are currently in the running for a grant uh, for an ambulance replacement. Other equipment, like the Type 3 engine, the water tender, fire station, the two ambulances, heavy rescue hazmat engine, and upgrades to the Bay Acre station, are all areas that we must plan for uh, in the future, but, but are not currently immediate needs. If the annexation of Bay Acres is realized, it will provide some funding to address the fire department needs. So we know that you know if that annexation does get uh, voted in, we will have um, that, that funding available for addressing some of the needs. Moving on to uh, police department uh, request. Uh, 
the body worn cameras, which is um, basically covers a five year lease at $160,000. Uh, police tactics have become complicated. And this technology, although not perfect, provides a line of defense for our officers at a time where everyone carries a cell phone camera and only one perspective of the incident is portrayed. The video can also be utilized for ever evidentiary purposes. <coughs> and finally, growing scrutiny of officer uh, tactics is getting stronger. With body-worn cameras, there is in independent recording of the circumstances involved. So we're recommending that purchase. Uh, police also needs the replacement of four vehicles uh, that are 10 years or older and or 150,000 uh, 150, miles. So it's time to, to replace those vehicles. Uh, the police building needs window treatment, stucco, and drainage improvements. Since the building is historic, we need to conduct a study first that will allow us to qualify for that grant funding for uh, historical renovation. Um, the building needs to be addressed as the elements are seeping in. Water, even wind, is, is felt uh, when you go into the building, believe it or not. Um, so in order to uh, restore that, that, that building, we're recommending 40,000, uh, actually 18,867, and tearing over 40,000 from prior years. I heard it was all the hot air over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the same, right? It was actually wind, huh? Okay. <laughs> sure was a water. <laughs> We're also recommending printers uh, to be more efficient with our officers in issuing citations. Uh, right now we're doing them basically by hand, handwriting hand them. Sometimes you don't understand what they're writing and it's just a lot easier to get them to uh, run through the a computer. 11 ballistic vests are, are needed. 50% of the, that cost will be uh, covered through a grant. Uh, finally, what we're also recommending the, to fund a, either a new animal shelter building or improvements to the existing facility. The existing facility is not conducive without enough space to hold the animals. It is old and the configuration is not optimal to our operations. We currently pay about $37,000 a year in rent to the U of A. Uh, the plan was to partner with the U of A to bring a vet program to the city of Douglas in partnership with the animal shelter and um, utilize the functions of, of running an animal shelter towards the educational program. But um, this has not been done for the past six years. While we continue to explore that idea, uh, we have to continue to, to uh, realize the needs out there to, to properly care for those animals. Um, and we are uh, requesting a meeting with U of A to make sure that um, what the plans are and how to move uh, appropriately. Okay. Did they, they ever, did they ever come up with the veterinary program? I don't think they did. I Not at this point, Mr. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's because it was supposed to be within a year or two, and then right. that's like five years ago. Been six years All that since, since uh, we've been in there. And uh, again, it's time to push that project to see if it's there's still um, uh, that need to bring in here. Uh, if not, we, we definitely need to move forward with the, with the best uh, solution for us. Moving on to uh, the Public Works Administration Department. Um, we recommend the funding of a new work uh, truck for the Public Works Director. Currently they are borrowing an, an admin vehicle, an Impala, a Chevy Impala vehicle. We also recommend uh, funding uh, the warehouse that's, um, we've got a structure built, I would say a quarter built out there by the Public Works Barn that um, we're uh, recommending $102,000 with carrying over of $56,000 to fully enclose it and utilize it for inventory, storage, and, and offices for public works administration and, and uh, public works personnel.
Next, we look at the construction departments from, from Public Works. We recommend to address the roof at the Public Works uh, Administration Building that requires attention due to uh, some uh, water damage that, that was experienced there. A utility locator for our, our maintenance crew to find buried utilities and cut down on time trying to locate them. A mini backhoe will also allow for better use and currently having to wait for the backhoe from the streets department to, to be able to, to handle the work. We're recommending one work truck uh, to, to replace uh, an aging fleet out there. Um, just require more maintenance, more cost to, to upkeep. Uh, recommend to finish the upstairs city hall men's bathroom renovations. Currently, the, the women's uh, restroom is, is, is underway. Uh, bathrooms need upgrading. They're old, outdated, and just not a, a good um, presentation to our community. We also recommend carrying over the, the replacement of the AC system at City Hall, as well as uh, landscaping for the 9th Street side of City Hall. I'm recommending $127,000 of carryover. Finally, the council chambers and lobby improvements. Uh, this room is in need of dire improvement. Uh, starting with the seating, which we know is not functional. It's, uh, we need something that's more mobile and make this room a multi-purpose room uh, to host other events and larger uh, gatherings with better spacing. Uh, the seating currently does not allow us to do that. Also, the, the wood paneling <coughs> needs upgrading. I think we can uh, see that, that we need to move into a, a different era by removing that uh, wood paneling and just simple uh, sheetrock. And I told him it looked good. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, man. <laughs> the popcorn ceiling is, uh, is another thing that we wish we could address, but unfortunately it, it requires a, a lot more substantive, substantive uh, process because of asbestos and asbestos removal. So. That uh, will run a little bit uh, at a higher cost to address. But certainly, I think the, the room will take a breath of fresh air <laughs> uh, by doing those uh, small improvements. We also, uh, the flooring will need to be redone as well. Uh, we, we also plan to redo tiling, the, 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 the ceiling tiling up on this uh, east side of City Hall. Um, but as you remove the ceiling, you, you will need to uh, redo that floor and, also modernized. Moving on to the Public Works uh, Fleet Maintenance, we recommend to uh, the need to install a wash pad uh, for uh, washing down of our heavy vehicle, heavy vehicles that are uh, parked over there. This is a need um, per OSHA requirements that, that we have to establish that space to wash down these vehicles and have a drain properly according to their standards. We also recommend the enclosure of the east garage. Right now it's, it's just a, it's, it's basically open. It's just a roof over it. Um, we can uh, utilize that space to uh, service more vehicles, our heavy equipment, so it's not uh, also sitting out there in, in, in the elements. streets, uh, this is uh, about a, a one and a half million dollars of investment. We talked about the, the one million dollars of, of uh, new funding that um, we are recommending to fund our equipment infrastructure um, that can position us in, 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 a, in a better uh, position to be able to address our street needs moving forward. Starting with uh, our, our asphalt plant needs uh, serious attention. We, uh, our, our current asphalt plant uh, basically uh, works uh, when it feels like working sometimes and doesn't produce uh, the, the output of asphalt that we wish it could to address more, more asphalt needs out in the community. By upgrading our plant, we can get, uh, as I mentioned, better output of a product out there, we can do some of it ourselves, 
We can also uh, think about the bond that Mayor and Council has uh, entertained the idea uh, to do so, and by having asphalt uh, generated here could um, reduce those costs for, for bonding. The alternative is to buy that asphalt outside of town, having to pay for that cost from a, from a vendor, uh, as well as uh, trucking it over here. So we feel that, that we can uh, make good headway um, in doing that, as well as uh, sell the asphalt uh, around town and help improve the, the, the facilities, the parking lots for private establishments, and sell to the surrounding communities. Uh, we used to do that when the asphalt was run, uh, the asphalt plant was running um, more at a more capable pace. Uh, we used to sell to to other cities around the area. The uh, accompanying equipment, uh, the backhoe, um, the lay down machines, the wheel roller, the end dump, the crack sealer, the dump truck. The, um, uh, all, all those pieces of equipment uh, will also position ourselves to, to better handle um, the street work that we can perform in-house, uh, putting us ahead with the right equipment. Um, we also recommend uh, funding just uh, another vehicle, just again, to move our, our staff from point A to point B. Uh, these, uh, this department hasn't uh, had uh, new vehicles in, uh, in some time. We also want to address the uh, streetlight fixtures, uh, about 50 of those fi fixtures that uh, need to be converted to LED. We know we did a full conversion uh, of LED, but some lights did not get in that. So we're, we're looking to address those that um, did not get converted. And, and again, as we mentioned before, $500,000 uh, to continue to do our chip seal program uh, for for the next uh, fiscal year. Any questions there? Um, and please, you know, just feel free to ask any questions uh, at any time during the presentation. No? Moving forward to our airport. Uh, the city was preliminarily awarded phase three of the perimeter fencing grant for, in the amount of $400,000, which carries a 10% match. The city would need to fund $40,000 of that, and that is to fully enclose our, our airport and secure it with, with fencing. Right now, the, the um, east side of the airport is not enclosed, and it's basically out in the open. Uh, so we will be uh, seeing that uh, award come through sometime in, in the summer or late <coughs> or early fall uh, for your consideration. But we are setting aside and recommending $40,000 of the matching component uh, to, to this uh, funding. We also recommend the purchase of a trailer that is needed to haul trash from the airport in downtown G Avenue. As we know, our, our FBO at the airport is half-time airport and half-time uh, street maintenance and in charge of the downtown uh, cleanup. So he's in two different places, uh, picking up trash from both uh, areas, and uh, he needs a, a trailer to allow him to, to be able to do that. Uh, just want to mention the beacon uh, ladder, the runway repairs. They are uh, going to be addressed in our request to uh, the state within our five-year CIP program. Whether those things will be funded or not is up to the state, but as we've communicated before, those have been challenging in the past to be able to fund those in full or at all, um, especially now with, with the state also we're, we're hearing that uh, they want to cut funding even further for the aviation uh, program. So we, we um, although we continue to pursue that, uh, our, our chances, uh, I would say, are, are, are not the greatest at this time, but we'll, we'll, we'll continue to push for them. The host Rio um, is something that was funded this year. Uh, we expect to finish that uh, next month. If not, we'll carry it over into, into next fiscal year, but we already have the quotes. We just need to make sure that it's the, it's the right parts that we need. Um, as well as the, the airport museum that included uh, adding bathrooms, as well as uh, air conditioning 
to make that a functional building, uh, we'll be carrying that over uh, in the amount of $60,000. Uh, the golf course, we're recommending uh, $40,000 of funding. Uh, they need to replace a shed that is dilapidated, uh, not in uh, good condition. Uh, also adding funding to finish the electrical upgrades to the RV park. We expect that the pump at the back nine to be uh, fixed by next month as well. Uh, we know we've uh, already um, uh, put the PLC, which is the automated system that regulates the, the water as well as uh, automates the watering for, for the back nine. That's already installed. We just need to refurbish the existing pump. We're, run, we're running currently on the backup pump right now. Um, so we uh, continue to, to utilize that funding that uh, uh, recommending to carry over $91,000 for the RV park uh, electrical upgrades, which um, are are needed to, to continue to offer that service out there. The, uh, the following are the transit uh, division request. Uh, transit received an 80-20, that's an 80% grant, 20% match for the design and engineering of a transit facility uh, a couple years ago. The site selection study uh, will be finished this summer, which uh, allows us to uh, study different areas that are optimal for the recommendation of the construction of a new transit facility. Uh, they'll be finished around this summer, and, we, and then after, after we can move forward with the with the design uh, of the of the site that is chosen. We also need security cameras at our existing yard, which we will carefully look at. Uh, if we are planning to change the bus yard. We will not invest heavily there, or invest something that can be. Uh, taken out and, and, and put out put uh, in the new bus yard. And finally, uh, bus 7405 is the only bus that doesn't have security cameras on board. Those are essential when, when, uh, for our driver safety. Uh, so we'll be addressing that. Uh, and again, all requests here are gonna be through the federal transit uh, grants. Yes, that's one of our older buses. Our next slide is the sanitation division. Sanitation is setting money aside for future fleet purchases, um, as well as uh, purchasing some containers that are needed. Uh, those are the 300,000 gallons and the 96 gallon, 96 uh, gallon uh, residential containers. Um, uh, they also are doing the, the fleet shop uh, paving project. Uh, the, the, the fleet facility needs to be, um, I should say, uh, concrete should be laid uh, out there in order to um, be able to work on vehicles outside as well. Um, to, if you need to lift a vehicle, you can't really lift them when it's, when it's dirt, especially if it's a, a heavy vehicle. So the enterprise funds are taking turns to, with that cost, um, and we're choosing to, uh, or recommending to carry over the sanitation amount for $10,000. On to the water division, which uh, we, we have a lot of uh, infrastructure to address. Um, uh, our main uh, project for water is to end well number 11 uh, for next year. Uh, we just finished a study uh, with Stantec that recommends uh, we take that uh, into our consideration, whether to build a new well or to deepen it. Uh, it seems that uh, deepening is a, is a better option at this time that we'll be looking at. Uh, we'll be borrowing $1.6 million for that well. We're also looking at several pieces of equipment. The backhoe uh, is, is, is a need, again, for uh, the maintenance and uh, emergency repairs uh, of different uh, issues and, and line breaks. Uh, the SCADA system re uh, request, uh, that, that, that's a, a network that manages our water system, it manages our water levels, our chlorine uh, levels, you know, it, it, it uh, provides warnings whenever we reach uh, levels that are dangerous or that we need to address. So it's, it's, a, it's a system that we currently have that 
is obsolete. It no longer is able to acquire service. Uh, but for this system, uh, which we're looking at a $1.3 million cost, uh, we're, looking, we're seeking grants for. Another piece of equipment is a hydro vac uh, to locate and repair uh, leaks and provide water pressure to fine lines in a safer manner. Uh, sometimes our backhoe uh, is not either, it's not accessible to bring in the backhoe because of, of room issues. Uh, and also the, by uncovering the lines with water pressure, it's a little bit gentler on the lines and, and, and may not uh, be so rough with, as it is with the backhoe. We're recommending one generator purchase for backup power to our wells that will basically uh, keep those running in case of power interruptions, as we know those, those are uh, critical. The reservoir roof needs to be replaced, must be, safeguard, um, must be safeguarded that the water that is in storage um, does not get any debris while it's uh, uh, being replaced. So that's a, a very uh, careful undertaking that we'll be looking at. Blue stake uh, locator, uh, again, to easily find utility line, uh, lines when we're blue staking. Uh, we're also recommending the, the inspection of the 300,000 gallon uh, storage tanks that we have. Those are inspections that are required. We need to take those on, and we're also recommending to carry over prior or this year's funding into next year. Again, uh, then providing uh, fleet shop paving. Um, and we're also recommending to begin addressing the, the fire hydrant needs at Bay Acres. We know that those are, are, are gonna be needs, especially if we're gonna be heading and uh, servicing that area. and need to install the hydrants uh, as, as recommended to provide uh, fire with uh, access to water. Uh, the automatic flush system is just valves that uh, improve the functionality of our well systems. And we're also putting in uh, building up budget capacity of $1.1 million. That uh, is an estimated cost of the design and engineering for the port of entry uh, infrastructure. And, and not just the port of entry, but the surrounding area that we uh, hope to address. We will be acquiring grants or seeking grants for, for this project. Um, we mentioned that we will be ad addressing um, the POE with uh, existing funding uh, to the tune of $500,000 for the design and engineering. This is actual funding that we have. The 1.1 is, is uh, basically seeking out grants for that cost. If we were to acquire those grants, obviously those $500,000 would not need to be utilized, but um, uh, we are uh, setting that, that money aside for that project as they're for possibly a 30% design of, of, of such a project. There's potential to partner with the county who has expressed interest of also them utilizing some of, the, some of their ARP money towards this project, so we, we wish to also be uh, obviously uh, in support of that and uh, in partnership with, with the county. Um, on, on the water field side, uh, some booster pumps uh, need to be replaced that uh, just are needed on, um, during high demand periods. Uh, the booster pumps by the Allegre place uh, also need to be replaced and sized uh, appropriately. Uh, finally, the second half of the finance office improvements is listed there. Again, it's flooring and repainting. We get into the last department, which is wastewater. Uh, under the CIP line, uh, we need to address the replacement of 17th and 18th Street sewer line from F Avenue to A Avenue. Uh, a lot of issues in that area. A lot of spot repairs have been needed in the, in the um, recent past. So we, we need to um, alleviate that maintenance and, and start thinking about replacing that line. We're also, uh, um, we need to start planning uh, the new sewer lines for 20th and 23rd Street. Again, that's our annexation area that includes Bay Acres. 
those uh, areas there did not get uh, the Baker sewer hookup. So we need to start uh, thinking about those, those costs and also pursuing grants uh, for that, which is something that we'll be, we'll be undertaking. Uh, additionally, uh, we have 2nd and 3rd Street from San Antonio to Rose Avenue. That is a county island that, again, possibly can be an annexation area, but um, we're also considered about the environmental impacts of those areas in case those uh, leach fields fail, that water can, can uh, definitely seep into, into the water table. So uh, something that we are, it's in our, in, in our planning to address. Uh, we're also looking to carry over funding for the walkway uh, at our wastewater treatment plant that needs to be reconstructed, $25,000. And also carrying over again the POE uh, infrastructure that this is a wastewater portion of $1.2 million. Again, increasing capacity and seeking grants for this, for this project. The wastewater field side uh, we're recommending funding for a forklift, uh, as well as combining it with carryover from last year. We're currently needing to borrow from a private uh, company uh, to uh, drive it over to our shop and, and lift our, 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 our heavy items. Um, it's, a, it's an inconvenience, and also we're borrowing the one from our, our fleet department, uh, also an inconvenience to place it in our vehicles and then carry it uh, back and forth when it's uh, being um, um, utilized in both areas. The SCPA tanks are also needed in case of any chlorine room emergencies, any type of leaks, those uh, pieces of safety equipment are OSHA required, so we must uh, have those there. Okay, that's it. I will turn it over to Rocio to talk about our employees. Good evening, Member Council and members of the Finance Committee. Um, as you may know, employees um, are usually a big component of our municipal budget. You know, salaries and benefits. Through the benefits we have for employees with security, Medicare, we have the retirement, which is both um, ASRS and PSPRS. We also have our disability insurance that we provide. We have workers' compensation that by law we need to provide. Um, and we have life insurance, uh, our health insurance, and through our health insurance, we've been able to provide a more robust uh, employee assistance program for our employees this year. So we're, we're some, that's something that we've been providing and marketing to them to be able to use more. We have a telemedicine component as well through that program. Uh, so we we're wanting to make sure that they're, they're using it and it's beneficial to them. As part of the benefits as well, we provide a safety and wellness program that any programs that we try and, and implement with employees as, as best as we can, you know, month by month, we have some, some programs that are going out to them and hopefully they're getting some benefit out of that. Um, this year, of course, we had departments that asked for, for new positions, increased funding, and reclassifications. These are some of the things that we were able to do and also list some of the things that we were not able to do. Um, a reclassification in her that we're asking or we're going to come back to ask Mary Council as part of a, a meeting of organization with um, leisure services and public works. And for, but for her, it's going to be a labor position or labor positions that are limited at the moment that we want to make them permanent and we want to make them also permanent or greater ones. And that's because we want them to be able to, um, we want to be able to require a commercial driver's license for them to be able to operate the equipment that we need to operate in streets. The other component that was mentioned earlier is that we funded uh, fully for 12 months the positions of deputy city manager, parks maintenance worker, and equipment mechanic one. So those have only been partially uh, funded for the current fiscal year, uh, the, the DCM at one month, and the equipment and the parks at six months. So now we're funding them for the whole 12 months. There are some of these requests that you see before you, um, that the departments had, and these are the ones that we were not able to um, include in this budget, but we wanted you to know what they were. And the reason is that um, these require sustainable revenue, and we actually don't have enough to be able to fund these requests. 
Um, but we want you to be aware what they are because they'll probably come back in the future, future years for us to, to look at again. So we had clerical aid positions requested in development services um, at the visitor center. We had a uh, full time request for the county to take in finance. For fire, they were asking for a battalion chief, for a fire marshal, fire marshal, I'm sorry, and three firefighters. Um, and housing for a part time admin assistant. IT was asking for a specialist. Um, library was asking for a, a library aide, currently um, part time to be full time. Um, Aquatics was asking for their main sick two position to be funded. Uh, cemetery was asking for an additional cemetery labor position. Um, parks also asking for a parks labor position. Police uh, asking for a crime analyst and four police officers. Uh, Polaris administration was asking for a construction field inspector um, part time. And Public Works Construction was asking for a maintenance tech one. And Fleet was asking for a mechanic, um, equipment mechanic two. And also from the utility side, we had wastewater asking for two collection tech ones and water asking for a water tech four. These last two are something that you're probably going to see coming to you um, soon as well. Because these are our minimum or substantial needs that are going to be required for water and sewer. So we're going to be coming back to you with those, possibly with the utility rates. Um, so it's something to have in the back of your mind. Again, they'll need more positions, but at least these are the ones that they were requiring for water and wastewater. Some of the small um, changes that we were able to make and we're recommending in this uh, fiscal year is going to be uh, for the library specialist currently that is budgeted at 30 hours. It's a full-time position, but we want to make it at 40. And that's how it was initially intended years, years back. Um, so that cost is going to be about $10,000 for that library specialist to go from 30 to 40 hours. We're asking for overtime increase in cemetery from 5000 to 7000 um, and you made from 1500 to 3500 And that's just a reality of the things that they have to do. They have to answer, you know, the weekends for humane on calls, and also for cemetery you know, during the, uh, the weekend um, funerals. And finally, we're asking for the on-call staff funding um, in Fire EMS to be increased from 50000 to 60000 And that's just a small increase that we were able to, to do, of course, they they would like more and we would like to pay more, but at least it's what we could afford this year to help them with mitigate some of the overtime costs that, that we have as well. And finally, as far as employees, based on the surplus that we might have at the end of this current fiscal year, we're going to be looking at providing a one-time distribution to employees before the end of the calendar year. So that's something that we'll bring back to you later on as, as soon as we know what the numbers will actually be. There are some things that are still pending. Um, hopefully we'll know these by early June, hopefully by before the, the time of adoption. We have health insurance costs. Those, I'm pretty sure we'll get to you and actually we're gonna be voting on those on Wednesday, so those will be there. But the risk liability insurance is something that's still pending. Um, hoping that I can get those numbers by the end of this week. Workers compensation as well, um, the cost for that insurance. Um, we also need to wait on the final search share revenue um, amounts that we get from the state. Those usually also come in at the beginning of June or middle of June. And we also just need to make sure that we have the, the final guidance on the use for the uh, ARP um, monies for the 4.3. And as far as um, the calendar, what we have left to do with this budget, uh, we wanted to give you some dates just to make sure if you had questions, um, you knew you know, what dates were coming up. Um, you can always come and ask us directly in our offices, um, whatever you need to do, with specific questions that you might have in, the, in your budget book. So today, of course, we're doing the Mayor Council Finance Committee Budget Board Session, May 24th. We're um, planning on having a Finance Committee recommendation to Council meeting, um, or a meeting where the Finance Committee is going to make the recommendation to Council on June 1st. Um, the tentative budget adoption will be on June 9th, and we're looking at the final budget adoption for the new fiscal year on July 14th. July 14th. 
but now we'll open it up for any questions that you might have on the presentation or your budget books. I'd also like to take this time. Thank you very much for for the great presentation, obviously. Um, seeing you guys work on this is very good. It was obviously a team effort from the leadership in the staff and uh, here at City Hall, so truly appreciate it. I would encourage the members of the Finance Committee along with the, with the Council to, th this was the introduction to the budget. And so as you take these documents home and look at them, and I would suggest that you, if you have questions, to go ahead and pose them and send them to, uh, to Monica, and we can help you with that, or you can write them down and come visit her and ask her about it, whatever you'd like to do. And then she will compile them all and then answer those questions back out to all of us so we all know what those answers are so we don't repeat those questions and we can have a good idea as the finance committee meets on the first and then it comes in front of the uh, mayor and council on the ninth that we have those questions ahead of time to be a little bit more efficient in, in how we do that. Don't be afraid to ask questions. If you don't understand something there, just say you know, why. And uh, I'm sure staff would be more than happy. But again, this is an introduction to, to the budget. And as you can see, it's 40 pages or so worth of, of stuff. And it, uh, they presented it in a very easy way to, to digest. But nevertheless, there still are some questions that you may have that some funding that you think, gosh, that sounds very important. Why aren't we doing that? If you need more clarification on that, then they'd be happy to, to provide that. So I want everyone to feel involved. Uh, you can ask questions right now if you want, or again, you can uh, go home and look it over and, and pose those questions via email or written uh, back to Monica, and she'll get with the team and, and get the answers back to us. So either the Finance Committee or Council, do you have any questions or comments? Right yes, Mr. Just Hilton. One short one. Uh, decrease of 400000 on ambulance fees. What's that entail or not entail? Or what's the difference of what we'll be doing next time? Um, yeah. The city is moving away from interfacility funds, interfacility transfers, and so that's why we're no longer billing for the trips to Tucson and Phoenix and Sierra Vista. Who's billing? Arizona Ambulance. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so they're, they're being handled, and we are chief backup in case there is an overflow that we still are available and still would participate. But it's, uh, it's wear and tear on our ambulances and our overtime and et cetera, et cetera, and private business is here and able to handle that. So that's why we're backing up. Although else, we see a 400000 reduction in revenue. I mean, just we say oh, oh, yeah, there's a savings in the in, in right oh, yeah. so. <laughs> they were very efficient. <laughs> okay. Yes, Mr. Valdenegro, please. Our grant writer, is the person here? He was, but I, yeah. he must have snuck off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. okay. Is she going to be a part of the finance committee, or is she just going to be separate? Or just something? He's, uh, he's a member or uh, part of the finance department. But not necessarily part of the finance committee. The finance committee is a is a community representation, and, and uh, Monica heads it uh, as well as uh, the city manager. So um, his input is is from another level, uh, back to Monica or back to the city manager. But again, Mr. Rollin, if you have any questions about no, what ways we're doing, oh, I'm sorry, he was, he was sitting right over here. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I, I with with a sleek one. haircut. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like Mr. Cordova here. I got cold. Yeah, or next time you're down, I'm sure they yeah, we we put to you together. You. I'm sorry. sorry. I make just want to know what this okay. Is. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Uh, Anel, you have anything right now? No, not right now. Don't mean to put you on the spot, but you're on the phone, so I thought, just wanted to make sure. Just wanted to make sure you had an opportunity. Thank you. Okay. 
Anybody else? No, I just got this two days later. Right, exactly. Yeah. So there's a lot to, mm -hmm. to digest. Again, we use acronyms a lot that are you know, for us as everyday language. Yeah. So please ask us those questions and we'll be happy to clarify. Now, again, and that's where I call the staff call. We want this to be a very open process. That, you know, it's all right there and for everyone to see. And that's, and it's, I think we're doing a good job. So I think we're making, not that it was horrible before, but it's, we're getting more and more understandable in uh, everyday language <laughs> to help people to be able to understand. It. Okay. In that case, uh, we'll move to, we'll take item nine in front of item eight, if that's okay. Adjournment of the uh, Finance Committee. May I have a motion from the, a member of the Finance Committee to adjourn? I have a motion to adjourn. Thank you. A motion by Mr. Cordova to, is there a second? Second. 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 Thank you. And now, uh, for adjournment, all in favor signify, all of the Finance Committee signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Better not be. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now for the mayor, mayor and council, may I have a motion to adjourn? I make mayor. a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Thank you very much. Motion by Mr. Shelton, second by uh, Mrs. Morales to adjourn the council meeting. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. We stand adjourned. Thank you guys for being there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.